Hey YouTube, it's your history teacher, Mr. Terry, back with another memes video. So we're gonna be checking out some brand new memes that I haven't seen before. Hopefully we can find some good ones if I'm able to add any context or explain anything great. But I actually find a lot of times here that I hear of stories that I haven't heard about. So it's a nice place sometimes to, if you hear a good story, you can go in and research it and find out if it's true. Because we all know memes may or may not actually be true, but obviously they are especially funny when they are, it's something that you can relate to. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to check this out in just a second. So how this works, if you haven't seen this, um, what ends up happening is over at my Discord server, there is a channel for memes where you can post um, awesome history memes and definitely do that. And then my mods over there pick uh, some of those and put them into a place that I can check them out. And that's exactly what this collection is from. So again, if you would like to um, submit some memes, definitely join our Discord server. There's a link down below that you can do that. Find the memes channel over there and um, let's see what you got. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we got, <laughs> all right, so first one here, let's see what we got. It says, when another 14 year old rocks up on the Western Front 1915. How do you do fellow adults? <laughs> so, <laughs> You know, one of the things that, that unfortunately happened in uh, World War One was the need for so many soldiers and recruitment ages and drafting ages got lower and lower till literally you were getting like early to mid-teens. Um, <laughs> so you get that there. Yeah, they're showing up, especially again as the war went on over and over. So yeah, having to fit in with the adults, which was probably pretty hard. And just imagine again yourself at like 14 years old and having to go into the worst conflict that had ever existed before. So, geez, yeah, trying to fit in there. Nice. All right, let's move on. What do we got here? We got fish crawling out of the water 375 million years ago. Fin will be leg. I don't know what this means. Someone fill me in on this. Oh, fin will be... Okay, okay, wait, wait, okay, again. So fish having fins, and then eventually those um, <laughs> fins got stronger and were able to support their weight on something dry, so then they get leg. I get it. So this one just required some editing of some kind. What is this from, by the way? I'm sure you all know. I get it. It took me a minute. I thought I thought it was going to be like lowbrow, low brain, and it ended up being big brain. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, a little um, speciation there. Very nice. All right, what do we got here? I forgot from Aragorn. Let's go ahead and blow this one up if we can. Okay, here we go. We've got the Kettle War. So date, I haven't heard of that off of just my top of my head. Uh, October 8, 1784. Okay, a decisive Dutch victory, uh, victory. The belligerents, so yeah, the Habsburgs versus the Dutch. The strength, three ships, including the warship Lady Louis and the Dolphin. I'm assuming that's what that means in Dutch. In, 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 uh, in Dutch. Maybe not. <laughs> casualties and losses, so the Dutch had none. And then the casualties for the Habsburgs. One soup kettle and presumably all the soup held within. And you're just like, what? What the heck was this about? I mean, it was a, it has a decisive Dutch victory. Somebody edit this in. Is this actually what? Because this is like the Wikipedia format. Format. So is that actually what this, this is actually posted there? I'm going to have to check this out after. Well, you know, I, I feel bad. I, I don't like the destruction of any food. So I will go ahead and give some uh, salutes to that soup kettle that lost its soup the kettle and the uh, and the soup of itself so sorry to lose you but you will you may be gone but you will never be forgotten truly okay wait, all right what we got here we got when you invade germany in six days blit 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 blitz krieg okay so what we got like yeah okay so we got Blitem's Creek. Someone's gonna have to explain this one for me here. I mean the 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 Blitem's Creek. I get the invasion of Germany. <laughs> Blitem's Creek. Someone explain. I'll have to look it up. 
Good stuff. All right, what else we got here? All right, we got Boss. He's up there. He's like on his desk. He's getting pulled. The leader is up front. Okay. The Panzer crew and the Broken Panzers. Yeah, they... You know, just just in general with tanks. You know, Panzers are, are German tanks. Um, this would have been World War II on which the, the, the tanks were a little bit better, but the Germans and well, a lot of people had ta uh, had problems with tanks. Especially those World War One tanks. If you look at those and how like worse they were than <laughs> World War II tanks. If you look at some of those early British ones and stuff like that, they were you would have had to try to get them um, you know, moved. But I you can't you can't like pull a tank like that. You would have to have so many um, people to, to be able to do something like that because they're like multi ton. But anyways, okay, <laughs> good stuff. All right, what do we got here? Um, we got France and the UK. You can't just say that the Suez Canal Company is nationalized and expect anything to happen. Abdel Nasser, I didn't say it, I declared it. First off, I love The Office. If you said other videos, uh, if you've seen other meme videos, which seems to be they do a lot of history memes with Michael or a lot of different things. The shut up about the sun one, those are good too. But anyway, um, so Nasser was the leader of Egypt. And the Suez Canal was basically owned and operated by Europeans. And when he came into power, he understood that, that was a huge kind of issue in a way because of the money, of course, and the control that the, the Europeans had over it. And the Suez Canal is critical for the economy of Egypt. So he nationalized it, took it over for them. And you had the, what's called the Suez Canal Crisis, which was like a short little war that, that was fought there. But um, he kind of got heroic status by a lot of people as this person that was defeating off this like economic imperialism um, that was happening after World War II. So, yep. And if you declare it, then it's it's legit. <laughs> All right. What do we got here? When you're a doctor in the American Civil War and you amp amputate someone's leg because it's bruised, the medic. Yeah, when you're a doctor in the American Civil War and you amputate. Is he from a game? I don't know this guy, but yeah, I'm, I'm assuming he's from a game because there's medics in the video games in the vi in the video games. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, they had to. You know, this was only like just briefly with anti um, with like antibiotics, and if you got you know an injury, especially like in this era and before you were so likely to have infection that you just, you got amputated, you, you got amputated. So, you know, you got some wounds in your arm or leg, you just, you amputate. That's what you do. And until modern antibiotics, which started to come around about this time where you could actually spread or uh, pr um, contain or, or like stop the spread of infection, which saved the limbs of a lot of people. But yeah, amputation was just like the thing you did. And it was common. See somebody with that, that had been to war. All right, so we got some uh, we got some Beethoven here. Okay, you dedicate your third symphony to Napoleon because you believe he is democratic and anti-monarchist. He declares himself emperor of France. <laughs> yeah, Napoleon spoke out of both sides of his mouth a lot because he was this person that like teetered on the line of the revolution and some of the rights that came with that and from representation. Um, thought he could basically be like an emperor while at the same time protecting all of the things that made the French Revolution, the French Revolution there. So I didn't know he did that, though. Like, as far as writing a symphony, um, uh, that that discussed that. So I learned something new there. All right, let's move on. Did you rise up? Yes. Did you stand up to evil, to oppression? Yes. Did you fight for freedom for Poland? Yes. What did it cost you? Everything. So this is Thanos, and all of the all of the, the the Avengers people are like screaming at me to get the context here, but no, it's good. Yeah, I mean, poor Poland, right? Poland has been in a tug of war, okay, of different often larger powers for a long time, like Russia in the East and then Germany in the West. 
and then you had like Prussian years and all of these different things like what's going on here. And um, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people that did have to try to fight up to protect it ended up going down, um, which happened a lot in history. So history of Poland, man. Talk about it a lot on here, I feel like, or it gets commented a lot. All right, what do we got here? Ulysses S. Grant accepts con, uh, Confederate surrender at Appomattox Courthouse. Uh, they had us in the first half, not going to lie. I think I've seen that. Isn't that – there's like a kid. There's like a high school team, right? And this kid – is he the one that was like super positive? I'm trying to remember what this video was from. And, you know, he was like super positive because I think they ended up winning the game or something like that. Um, but the historical context is true. The early uh, years of the of the American Civil War were terrible. Ulysses S. Grant was the general of the um, of the northern states, right? The United States of America, you know, fighting the southern states, the Confederate States of America. And, yeah, it didn't go very well um, early on. Eventually, Ulysses S. Grant becomes the general leader in the war. And uh, you started to see more progress from the north um, after that had happened. But there you go. Very nice. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Let's, uh, let's pull this one up. This one's a little small. Ship in sight. Open the gate. Okay, we got your pant. It's a European one. Close the gate. They are Dutch. Open the gate a little. I love this. This is great. So the Tokugawa came into power about 1600. And um, eventually they closed their doors off to Europeans. At first... Um, Japan actually traded with Europeans. Those are some things that they actually wanted. They were interested in like gunpowder, for example, technology for castles and ideas about that kind of thing, which blended kind of well with the feudal structure that, that Japan had gone under. Um, but they also eventually saw how oppressive the Europeans were and how they took advantage of places like the Philippines, for example, and said, all right, we can't trust them. So boom, we're going to close the doors. We don't need them. And they went under a... Um, pretty much a lockdown for a good over a century and and didn't trade with, with um, Europeans, except for the Dutch. Um, they did allow the Dutch to not come very often and come to a very specific port down uh, south by, I think, Nagasaki or so. Um, but they would allow them. And maybe that's just, uh, you know, and some of that because when you had, like, the Spanish, for example, which dominated a lot over in, like, the Philippines, they saw the force like religious conversions and try to like influence them culturally and the dutch weren't as uh, as big of a threat for that in that region as say maybe like the spanish were so they seemed a little bit less threatening but they were still um the dutch were kind of like the japanese little window to the western world a little bit and able to get new studies and new um, technologies from them but basically blocked out everybody else um, from Europe until the Americans start showing up in the 18, uh, mid 1800s and forcibly to open up their their borders for trade. That's good. I like this one. Yeah, open the gate. It's a European one. Close the gate. They are Dutch. Open the gate a little. I love that. That's my favorite one so far. That's my favorite one. All right, we got Teddy Roosevelt, American president, turn of the uh, 20th century, literally get shot. Oh no. Yeah, and then. Anyways, yeah, so uh, Teddy Roosevelt got shot by an attempted assassination and went on that day to, like, actually make a speech. He went on to make a speech, and it's kind of gone down as this, like, legendary status for presidents that the dude gave a speech basically with a – I think I think the story says the bullet was still in him, like, before he – like he still made a speech, like his, yeah, the bullet was still in him before he had it removed. So it's kind of gone down as yeah, this this uh, heroic event for uh, President Roosevelt. That's a great picture of the face. Like get shot. Oh no! <laughs> Very good. I like that one too. Good couple memes there. Good job. Who's this? Ishi. My mods. Good stuff. Your your years were great. You're winning the mod fight for picking the uh, uh, the, the the memes out of the, the channel. <laughs> okay, so what do we got here? We got a tweet. Me stepping out of time machine. I come from the future. Soldier, oh great, we could use your help. Thousands, thousands of us have died in this war for a treasure called salt. Me what, like, like table salt? Why do you call it that? Me, uh, why do you call it that? <laughs> Is it just a reference because like salt is so common now, but it used to be such a high value commodity 
that was worth fighting over, you know, when you, you had, um, especially in the age of imperialism where, like, for example, the British had a monopoly over salt in India, um, for example, there. And um, so, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good, though. But it's amazing how products like this, their value um, as compared to what they're like today. You know what I mean? If I remember, like, the Middle Ages, the amount of pepper, you know, like like the amount of pepper that you could buy at a grocery store would be, like, over a year's wages, you know, Um in like the, the middle ages or something like that. Kind of crazy how that works out, but we need to just see in general, all of the different like conversations that could happen of people of different times. Oh, just, uh, okay. This one. Oh, what you got there? A man. Oh, Diogenes. Okay. So was it Socrates or Plato that said, you know, man is like a featherless bird? Was that was that the quote? Diogenes is a super fascinating cynic slash philosopher that got written about. I actually was reading a book this summer um, a little bit uh, about him. And that was one of the famous things that he like, I think it was like a featherless bird is that what he was responding to. And he had this famous thing where he had this like plucked chicken and presented it. And he's like, here, look a man <laughs> but look at that geez, some crazy videos the dude was was an odd dude as far as like he had no possessions basically was homeless and just talked to people and did all kinds of crazy stuff in athens just interesting guy with some interesting philosophies that were um really can get you thinking and be kind of and be kind of um good too all right all right let's zoom this one in a little bit no, you can't just shoot me with a weapon that took you hours to train. I trained my whole life to be a knight. It's unchivalrous. Ha ha, gunpowder, go bang. Yep, guns. Yep. <laughs> you know, guns change so much. I mean, just in the Middle Ages when, when gunpowder started coming over, you know, from Asia, and you get guns and cannons, it totally changed the whole way of life of years and of training that took, like, like this meme is saying, um, a whole lifetime to do with horseback riding, archery, uh, um, and then melee combat like with swords. But then you have something like a gun or a cannon that could destroy a castle or a gun that could destroy uh, something like this. Totally changed that way of life and made fighting uh, quite a bit easier in a way, I would say, at least from the technological standpoint. Although we know these guns, they you know, especially early ones like this, were terribly inaccurate and slow to reload. But nevertheless, were an impactful thing that changed a way of life for a whole, a whole class of kind of warrior citizens that way. Good stuff. All right, we got, uh, looks like three more. Okay, what do we got? Okay, so we got the British. Hitler, don't invade Poland. I'll give you Czechoslovakia. So I don't know the anime stuff, but I think it doesn't matter. Uh, Poland was kind of like a brainchild in a way, like the proud proud child of the allies of World War One. that after World War One, Poland was created. It was taken from what used to be part of Germany and part of Russia. And when... When uh, um, the Germans had invaded the states around Poland, South there, Austria, Czechoslovakia, um, they knew that Poland could be a threat. And that's where the British, like, for example, said, all right, like Hitler, if you threaten Poland, we are going to declare war. Um, and then basically as a deal is Czechoslovakia, because the Sudeten land is a part of Czechoslovakia that is ethnically German mostly. And part of the deal that happened uh, between the British, specifically Neville Chamberlain and Hitler was, you know, hey, I, I promise there's nothing after Czechoslovakia, right? Or specifically the Sudetenland because it was ethnically German and Neville Chamberlain agreed. He's like, all right, I guess you can have it as long as they are predominantly German ethnically and are willing to do that, then, then so be it. Um, so that was, yeah, kind of the thing, but the, yeah, the, uh, the promise, okay, not going to invade anymore. And of course that promise didn't last long because they invaded the Czech, the rest of Czechoslovakia, the non, uh, ethnic German part. And then also Poland, um, which was kind of the line in the sand that was crossed. And then world war two in Europe began as a result of that. So good context there. So this is inquisitor Hitler invade. Okay. So more invading Poland. Can we just leave Poland alone? Jeez. Hitler invading Poland. Stalin also invading Poland. Yep. 
So, yeah, the, the famous thing was Hitler and Stalin made a non-aggression pact, basically saying, hey, let's not fight each other. And what we'll both do is correct the wrongs that happened in World War One when the Allies basically took Poland away from, you know, like I said it was split in half, um, which had historically been kind of the uh, thing that had gone on for a long time. And they agreed that they wouldn't fight each other, but they would both invade Poland. And they did simultaneously, and poor Poland was caught right in the middle of that and torn apart. All right, and the last one for today. What do we got? The South, let's uh, let's pull this one up. Sorry if the last one wasn't um, big enough there. Okay, so this says the South Sea Company after crippling the British economy. It's nothing personal, Jack. It's just good business. <laughs> yeah, like um, British imperialism, especially in certain areas, was dominated by these joint stock companies. You know, um, these go companies that would offer that have multiple investors, but would operate with like government support, but technically were privately owned, even though there's kind of deals there, and they just dominated things. I mean, I, I like to for let me give you an example. Um, the British East India Company over here, and. They also had like military support. And I like to, I used to, in my classrooms, liken it to like, hey, what if Walmart with its economic resources and size and reach also had an army? And maybe there you go, you have the British East India Company. And yeah, it can dominate an economy. They have the economy of like a nation almost. And that was definitely a thing that was happening in the British Imperial era. All right, you guys. Um, with that, we saw, okay, so yeah, we're all caught up on the ones that were pulled out. So we definitely need more memes. So if you are on the Discord or not on the Discord yet, find some good ones out there that the best ones are the ones that, you know, again, have good historical value and you know a little about it. Like you can talk about it. You could explain it. You know what I mean? But we had some good ones here. Let's see some of my favorite ones. I liked the, uh, I liked... I liked these ones. I think my favorite one was this one with the close the gate, open the gate. I think that one was my favorite one. I do like the the own like the Teddy Roosevelt one. I thought that was really good. Okay, Napoleon. I did like that one. Always like the office, so I'm into those for sure. So, all right. Well, thank you for that, um, you guys, for putting those together. But, yeah, you can check that out. The link to the Discord is down below, as well as the link, some links to my other stuff, like my gaming channel. Also, one of the fun things you can get out of um, the Discord, too, is if you're a gamer, specifically Minecraft, there's a uh, community Minecraft server that focuses on, like, history creations. It's a lot of fun. If you join the Discord server, you can get access to that. You go in there, grab the role for Minecraft, and you'll open up a whole set of channels that uh, can get you access to the Minecraft server um, on PC, as well as some other gaming channels, as well as all the different categories we have for our historical discussions. It's a great, fun place to hang out. So anyway, that's down link down below. Love to have you be a part of that. And with that, we'll see you guys hopefully soon for another meme video. If you can keep putting out good ones that I can check out, I'll keep making these videos. All right, and with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.